So we're going to start off with the main concern that most people have is the relationship at the moment between CLL and COVID, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, yeah. People don't know what to do, really. They're anxious about their response to the vaccine. They're anxious about how they find out if they've got any antibodies, whether you think they should be trying to get some tests for the antibodies, and they're anxious about their T-cell responses. Um, so I don't know if you could maybe start off by, by, by looking at that. So that's a broad question, so I apologise for that. But uh, um. it, Yeah, no, I, yes, that's, um, that's a regular topic in my clinic, so <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing really uh, surprising here. Um, we knew from, from the very, very long time that um, response to any vaccines um, in hematological patients is inferior. So there is nothing new. And as you, as you may know, um, your clinicians would be telling you, go and get yourself vaccinated for pneumococcus and you need to have two, two months apart and you need to have a, a pneumovax and Prevna. And that's the reason, because we know that response to Vaccin pneumococcus vaccination is inferior. So it's easy to extrapolate, of course, any other vaccination um, will be inferior, but that mm -hmm. does not mean that there is no point doing it. It's still worth doing it. Obviously I can't, I mean, I can only speculate. So even if that vaccination is giving you 10, 15% of protection, it's still 10, 15% of protection. Um, there is no way I can tell you exactly your level of response is. Yeah. We're not advocating doing antibodies. The problem doing antibodies is if you imagine a scaffold and there is a one screw in that scaffold, which is antibody level, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the scaffold and I'm looking at the screw. How can I extrapolate to a scaffold? You can't because it, the immunity is an interplay between T cell, B cell antibodies, and just checking the level is not going to really inform me much because, you know, hypothetically, I'm testing the patient. Oh, you've got no antibodies. Um, oh, I haven't responded. Well, well, I, I had told you, you probably didn't. That's not a surprise. But then on the contrary, if there is a response, there is a level of antibodies, what well, you're going to take your mask off and go and support England and stand next to thousands of football supporters. I mean, I've got to say, I'm horrified when I'm watching Wimbledon, all these people packed on center court yeah. and court one sitting not two meters apart and not having a mask. So, so well, knowing that you've got antibody, you would stop doing what we've learned over 50, last 15 months so hard wearing that mask, keeping social distancing, stay, you know, it works. And we've, that survey we've done, the Professor, Professor Fagan um, doing survey with this, with help of, you know, with you, you guys did the survey for us. One thing we've, we've shown in that survey, the most powerful thing what worked to stop people from having COVID is shielding. Well, I'm not mean shielding, you know, in a, in a sense, we were thinking completely bubble uh, early days of pandemic, but wearing masks, doing all those public health measures, they work. They've been working sin, since um, medieval times and they still work and they're still the best. So, so, yes, we're learning more, but I wouldn't. And I know there is the one of the follicular patients tweeted. We all doomed because, you know, we don't respond. I think, you know, that's that's misinformation, disinformation There's nothing new here. Where hematology, when we treat uh, treat you, the hematology itself affects the immune system. So it's a, not a surprise it will affect the vaccine response. So that's why it's important that make sure that everybody around you will be vaccinated. So you are protected by proxy. Um, vaccinate, obviously continue vaccinating yourself, but really there is no point demanding antibody testing because it, you know nobody really can explain what it means. And you know what, what reassurance you're looking for I mean, yes, I know I've been vaccinated and yes, I still got a chance to have a COVID. So I'm being very careful. And I think so should everyone. 
So for our community, particularly maybe the under 60s group, this is, this is they, I think they're going back out to work, they're trying to go to their children's sports days, they're trying to do all sorts of things. So your advice is to keep using the mask, keep socially distancing, but potentially some of them have got to go back. Some of them have got to work to live, they've got to, they've got to earn money. Um, so your advice is to, to not to not to shield totally as we were shielding, but to to go well, out there, but be careful. Well, so uh, I mean, I again, it's difficult to assess that, mm. and I've got to say, you know, I'm I'm constantly bombarded by letters from occupational health saying, oh, your patient, um, I've just reviewed, you know, it's their job in a way, not mine, but you know, they they writing a letter, this patient of yours, she would like to go back to work in primary school. <laughs> It's it's an impossible question to ask me. Um, yes, of course, she will be at risk. Um, and basically what I say, you know, go to government website and look up clinic, most clinically vulnerable. And I think, 